Hello again. It's the first day of 2021 and uh, I doubt any of you really missed the last year. We're here in the harbor to film this yammering part of this video. I thought it would be a good idea to come here. It actually wasn't. It's quite cold and miserable. Winter is starting right about now. The lake is just about going to freeze maybe tomorrow and uh, in this video we're going to take a look at all the plants I've been working last year. The shed, the CNC router and of course the boat itself. So stick around. So before we start I just wanted to show you that the Lake Camel boat, the electric sailboat that we sailed on this very lake last summer has taken off from water successfully for the winter and I spent a couple of days of uh, winterizing the boat properly, putting a, a tarp on and uh, doing some things inside. Uh, the most important one was to properly winterize the batteries. Uh, the harbor already cut the power in October, so I wasn't able to charge the batteries. So I needed to rent a small generator to really top them up before I disconnect them. I left them in the boat for winter and uh, that's okay, but you really have to make sure that they are really topped up. And also it's important to disconnect all the cables so that there's not even slight current to drain the batteries during the winter. It is possible that if the batteries go all the way down, they can freeze and broke. Other things were also to dry up the bilges properly and uh, make sure that there's nothing to that can be freeze. Uh, although <laughs> I wasn't able to empty the black water tank anymore because the pump over there was already disconnected but I put some antifreeze there so I hope it's fine. Other than that just few moisture absorbers inside to prevent some mold growing and, uh, and it should be good until next spring. Another thing I did I took the motor and the sail drive off the boat and took them to the workshop. Uh, as you may remember I had slight issue with the gearbox so I have to take a look at that. Also I have the intention to build some mounting kits for this motor and this sail drive system. I have had few cutes already asking if I could manufacture those and uh, I think it's gonna happen. So if you're interested to turning your smallish sailboat which has this Volvo Penta MB250S sail drive into electric boat you can contact me and I will provide the conversion kit that will allow to mount this golden motor 3000 watt motor into that sail drive. I think we'll get back into that project in some later video. And meanwhile also we have started to build the CNC router so stick around we'll get into that soon. But now I think I'll ditch this place. I'm already very cold my hands are freezing and uh, I think we'll get into the car and continue this yammering from there. It's beautiful though. Okay, it's getting a little dark already. Time is 20 past 3 p.m. So yeah, this is winter time in Finland. <sighs> okay, let's continue. At this point, I would remind you to subscribe this channel because we are going forward this year a lot faster than before. So something is definitely going to happen in the next few weeks. So the video's title is Mixed Bag of Plants and we'll start with the plants of the shed. When building a boat in this climate it's essential to have a proper shelter for the build. In this case it also should be insulated properly. The average temperature in these latitudes is about 5 degrees Celsius. There can be years that the temperatures are below freezing over 5 months of the year. So you can imagine uh, using epoxies and other kind of kinds of glue in that environment. Although the summer may be warm, it is quite short and uh, there's really only a couple of months when the temperature goes on average above 15 degrees Celsius. And that 15 degrees is really something you have to have in order to work with epoxies. So in order to work efficiently all around the year I have to build an insulated and heated workshop. And there are a few options in that. Renting one 
is really not an option. The approximately 200 square meters what I need for this build can cost several hundred euros per month and we're talking about uh, multiple years here so it would cost so much that it would be impossible for me to fund. And the building one is actually considered as investment because when I build one I can also sell it when the build is complete and add that money into the pile for purchasing parts and all the other stuff for the boat. There is also ready to go options in the market Market, but I have had some quotes of them and uh, their prices are approximately the double I have to spend in this shed project so the only feasible option here is to design and build my own shed. Luckily I happen to be an architect so the designing of the shed is really not that big deal for me. However I need to consult a structural engineer in order to get the permits and stuff but that's quite a small investment and just to remind you i don't yet have even the place to build the shed so that's something i'm working on right now not to make things too easy building any building is not that straightforward in here the height of the shed of course makes it prone to wind forces and uh, when the winter comes the substantial thing that you have to really take care of here is the weight of snowfall so in that way even the temporary shed should be structurally sound so how big shed do I really need? Well, it really comes from the measurements of the boat. The boat itself is going to be like 15 meters long and I, we need some extra space to work around it. In addition, we need room for the CNC router and other machinery. With these specs, I came in conclusion that the proper size for this shed should be around 20 by 10 meters, uh, give it a take. In that way, there will be space available for small office, toilet and uh, some utility room. For example, I would really like to put the dust collection in a separate room to keep the noise level down. For height, there should be free space in around 4 meters. The boat height from the bottom of the keel to the top of the roof will be in something like 3.5 meters. One particular feature the shed should have is to able to open one end of the shed easily for the getting the boat out and in again. Okay, it's already dark outside, so I put some lights. I'm sorry if it looks horrible, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, for now, I have two different structural options for the shed. Common with these options is the insulated concrete floor with some foundations around it. The concrete floor should be as flat as possible in order to use it like a strong back for the boat build. So I plan to build the boat right on top of the floor without any additional strong back. It's also important to build the floor in a way that the moisture from the ground cannot rise up against any wooden structures because it would rot the wood in a few years. And around the floor there's going to be light concrete brick foundation for the walls. So the first option. The first idea I came up is a modular system based on the standard dimensions of plaster boards. The idea here is to self-manufacture a bunch of these identical elements which can be then assembled together and also after the project is done disassemble easily and sell for reuse. That plasterboard dimension, the standard here, is 1.2 by 3 meters and the single element then consists one of a half boards so the size of the element is that way 1.2 meters wide and 4.5 meters high. There's insulation inside the element and the blaster boards on both sides. And of course on the outside there should be cladding of some sort, possibly steel sheets. The hall itself would consist a bunch of these elements and on the corners there would be special elements that uh, connect each other proper way. When these elements are up on top of them you put possibly self-made or factory-made trusses and uh, another kind of elements for the roof. The roof elements are made of plywood or chipboard and on top of them will be the metal sheeting. The whole idea here is to really prefabricate all the elements and most of the other stuff and then just put them together. Uh, this option can be quite affordable. Uh, the materials used here are not expensive and with these quantities the prices can be negotiated in some way. In that way it could be quite economical option. The problem, however, is that there's a heck of a lot of work to be done before the shed is up. I would imagine uh, making these elements would take at least a couple of weeks for a bunch of guys. And 
We also would need a dry space to store the elements and of course truck to move them and stuff like that. The second option is more off the shelf side. In this version there is a structural column and beam system that can be prefabricated either in factory or by ourselves. There is however some additional foundation needed for these columns. On top of these columns and beams there will be the same trusses and this as the previous version and in this case all the exterior would be cladded with these prefabricated steel plated insulated panels. These can be ordered in size so it would be a really efficient and fast way to complete the shed. There is options to order even the roof panels so that they wouldn't need any additional cladding on the roof so that would be really nice. In addition to these panels there's just a few moldings to put on the seams outside and maybe on the inside and uh, that's it basically. The obvious advance in this version is the speed and effort. There's a lot less to do here and also it might be easier to sell afterwards because it's easier to disassemble and uh, when it's factory made it can be a little more convincing for buyer. Downside however is that there is more to buy and less to make ourselves so this might be a little more expensive option but that I don't know yet for sure. That's because I haven't really confirmed the needed structural dimensions either on the first option or in this option and the dimensions affect quite a lot of the price of every part so we need to figure out that first and that's in my to-do list in very soon to take a look at this with the structural engineer. After that information available I can make more precise calculations and uh, ask for prices. So what do you think of these options? Which way would you go and uh, tell me down below. We have two parts left, it's the CNC router and the bolt plan itself. So let's take a look at those now. Now the CNC router. Uh, the first video of that CNC router was quite a while ago and uh, the plan has really not changed that much from that time but there's a couple of uh, essential changes nevertheless. If you haven't watched the first video I would really suggest you to do that now before we go forward with this. I will put link up there and down there. Anyway the idea here is to build this quite big CNC machine to manufacture the parts, molds and other stuff needed for the boat and those can be manufactured straight from the computer model. In that way I think I will save a ton of time because I won't need to do any lofting or stuff like that. And everything should be very accurate to put together. Should. So in that way this machine is going to be the most important tool that I will have. And uh, I believe it's going to have some usage outside of this project as well. I didn't think it would create some side revenues coming from different small projects I, I can custom design and made like furniture and uh, stuff like that. And the router is actually on the works right now. Oops, here's the sneak peek of it. Oh, And the next video I'm going to do is going to cover just that. So make sure you subscribe to keep informed. But that's for the CNC plan. And the biggest change during this time uh, after doing some research was to ditch the belt drives. Now the Y axis, which is the longer axis, is going to be driven with rack and pinion. And the X axis, which is the axis shorter but this way is going to be operated by ball screw. The reason for this change is that I learned that the belt drive can be a little problematic. The belts tend to have some backlash issues and also they stretch just a bit over the years. So that's what we are dealing here. Also the rack and pinion system is relatively cheap to build. It's easy to maintain and easily upgradable. Ball screw of course is the best option but uh, with the span over three meters in this y-axis it's really not an option. It would wobble quite a bit when running it. There are some challenges um, I'm dealing with right now though and uh, the biggest one is that rack and pinion system will need some kind of reduction gear. Uh, you can't really drive the pinion straight from the motor but you would need some kind of reduction gear there. For this I'm just now kind of uh, stealing idea from the CNC router parts. Uh, they have this system that has a belt driven reduction 
and the, the motor and that to the pinion. Also, it has this uh, spring tensioning thingy that uh, keeps the pinion against the rack properly. I know that the rack and pinion system will have some backslash, but if that becomes an issue, there's also a workaround on that. But I think for this purpose, the performance and the accuracy is well enough. For now, I'm waiting some parts arrive thanks Brexit, and uh, when those arrive, I can go forward with this plan and the build. But yeah, let's jump to the boat itself. Uh, since the last video, when I talked about some of the hull shapes and the figures of the hull and things like that, I have received a new version of that hull shape. We talk about this with Mr. Tantoon, and uh, uh, he took a look of my plan and made some modifications for the hull. So we made the hull a bit wider in the middle and the stern to fit my plan better in there. So now there is slightly bigger room for the deck saloon and also it provides some room around the deck here. Also the hull is now redesigned from steel hull to wood epoxy. In that way it became a little shallower and displacement is slightly reduced, not very much. Uh, the numbers in this way look like this. Uh, the length of the waterline now is around 14 meters and the overall length is 15. Maximum beam is 4.43 meters and the hull displacement without any keels and rudder is about 13.5 tons, metric tons. And total with those is about 15.5 tons. With these numbers I would say the hull is quite well in balance and by comparison uh, it's surprisingly similar with Garcia Exploration 45 for example. With this shape change we have created some more sp space in the midships and the aft and here you can see the amount of room that is gained with this preliminary fit. So I haven't really yet modified all the parts to fit into this new shape but it's like a 5 to 10 centimeters, give it or take. Also you can see that the bottom of the boat has risen just a bit so the main cabin bed here on the right is quite close to the hull now and we have to remember that there's going to be some structures coming there so we have to keep that in mind but the most important message here is that with these plans that are basically ready to go i can now continue with the interior design and the planning process the basic layout i think has found its place but uh, you can maybe imagine there is plenty of stuff to go through still and uh, as we go forward i will have to dive a little more in details like uh, where the, all the lines and winches should be in order to sail the boat easily and also what regulations and certain measurements for example there are to allow the boat to go in the category a which is the ocean going vessel and how we support the masts what kind of structure are needed there and so on this list goes on and on all this stuff everything else will be covered in future episodes and now i really try to go forward with this planning process there will be a future episodes during this winter and spring covering all these things. So as you may notice, there's now things really starting to happen. My biggest concern right now is to collect enough budget to get that shed done. So I will focus on the next few months to get some paid work done as much as I possibly can. And the first purchases for the shed should be done in March. As the year ended yesterday, I really want to thank everybody who has already subscribed for my channel here. There's already over 700 of you. Thank you, everybody, you as well. And uh, we're getting really close to that thousand subscribers milestone soon. So thank you. We will continue this journey with the next episode where we will focus on the CNC router and hopefully we will we'll get most of it together. So stay tuned for that and remember to subscribe. I think that's it for this video. If there's anything you would like to ask, please put a comment down below and uh, remember to like the video as well. And have a magnificent and better this year. Bye!